Welcome back to HH Wheels. Today we're back working on our 1969 Dodge Charger RT SE. You already know the backstory in this car, but if you don't, I recommend you watch that video first. This car is quite special, but is it really all it's cracked up to be? We managed to do 1,500 miles in our yard find a 1969 Dodge Charger RT SE that we named Frizz. Resurrecting it from the dead was such a life-changing experience that not only taught us how well these were made, but also how much damn fun it would be driving an almost all original 69 Charger the distance that we did. Meeting people and hearing about stories of a Charger they had or grew up with also educated us on what Frizz once was and is now. It's been a few months since we put it through those paces and now it's starting to show its age. We have a very very short deadline to fix Frizz and get him road ready to head to Mopar the an obvious Mopar fanatic focus show and yet again put it through a whole other set of Dukes of Hazard tire slaying paces. Hey let's decode this thing. <laughs> hey I'm gonna decode this car by using the force. Okay. Okay let's decode this thing because we had a lot of people come up to us and say this is not a 440 in this car and I thought it was an original motor. But um, the more I look at it, the more I've got some concerns, so. And I went with what you had to say, so. <laughs> yeah. So let's go off of this VIN uh, and see exactly what we can find out. Right, so give me the first two digits. X, S. We have Charger, RT, third and fourth. Two, nine. That's two door sports hard top. What's the fifth one? L. L is 440, high performance. So it was born with a 440. Which makes sense for RTs, because didn't all RTs come with 440s? That's what I'm being told. That's what I've been told, so. Either a Hemi or a 440. What's the next digit? Nine. Which is 69. B. Uh, made in Hamtrak, Michigan. Uh, I believe this is LL. No, nope, I'm sorry, it's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, those are going to be the production numbers for the last, what? So 100,016,878. So what we do have is an L-Code 69 Dodge Charger. It is an original RT car, um, but we need to find out what the deal is with this motor and see exactly what we have, because I think we have either a 400 or a 383 in here that's probably been rebuilt. I'm also a little skeptical just because I've noticed small things like the timing chain cover on there was painted orange, but underneath it it's chrome and they didn't come chrome from the factory. Yeah, no. Well, the other thing is too, the valve covers got blue paint underneath them. Let's look underneath the hood real quick. All right, so one thing that was pointed out to me when we were on Power Tour is that the casting here, there is no flat spot in this area right here which would indicate that this is a 383 or a 400. The casting on a 440, there's a big flat spot right here. Ask me how I know. Well, let's go over to the 68. This and flat spot? Voila. You see, we have the 440. There's well, a this 440. Four yeah. On the, I mean, it might just be this one, but that's definitely a noticeable difference. Yeah, so it's, it's a big casting difference and it's something I just didn't catch um, because I was so excited about the car <laughs> and that it ran so well. We just, we didn't catch that. And so we were representing this car with the original 440 in it, but realistically, that's a 383. I'm almost thinking, guaranteeing it's a 383. Could be a 400, but let's get it in the air. We can check the bottom of the motor and it'll have a casting number on it and tell us. Is it on the bottom or is it on the side? It's on the side of the engine, but. Or on the driver's side? Yeah, we'll be able to see it on the lift. Cool. Uh, casting number 2468. One three zero dot nine. Two forty six eighty one thirty is a 1959 to 1971 383 B series big block. So it's a tray to tray. But it's a correct year of 383. Mm, you said something to 71. 0.9. So it is probably a 69. Hmm. Okay. Even though RTs originally came with 440s. They probably pulled it out of another charger though. Yeah, which is kind of legit, sort of. It could have come out of anything. 
Well, that just means that after we finish her 68 and we have some free time, which we always have free time, we just put a cool high performance 440 back in Fritz. Which I'm already working on right now. 4,500 bucks, this guy has one in North Carolina. Why don't we just put the V10 in your car and take the 440 out of your car? Because... <laughs> you know, we got really lucky with this radiator that we literally made it over 1,500 miles and didn't have a single leak until now when I take it to Cars and Coffee. So honestly, it doesn't owe us anything. I'm not even mad about it. And perfect timing for Mo Party for us to just give the charger what it deserves. Belly, belly cradle there. Oh yeah, perfect. This car was made for me. I'm gonna clean up this uh, <laughs> transmission fluid mess. Nothing a little brake clean can't handle. Oh my gosh! Make sure you use plenty of brake clean. She doesn't look terrible. Mm. It's got fuel on it. There's a lot of fuel on this motor and this oil. Yeah, there is. And you can just smell it. You see all the fuel just vaporing out. Can I have a hug? No. Be gone, Satan. Be gone. Okay, how many? of oil does a 383 take? I don't know. Five? Seven? Six? What? Frizz is still on the lift and now we have a broken transmission line which has to be replaced. We are supposed to be putting some kick-ass wheels on this car but we don't have the new tires in yet. Where are those tires? They haven't come in. Um, if they don't come in tomorrow, I don't know where that puts us as far as going to Mo Party and whether or not we're going to actually get everything on this car that we're supposed to rep be representing at Mo Party. I have acquired this piece of tubing, which is 60 inches long, which is exactly how long this piece of tubing is. Almost every Mo Part I ever worked on, they've had they have these female type ends on them, uh, and the lines that you get at your local auto parts store are gonna have male type ends that fit in. Uh, and I really did not want to change out the brass fittings in the, in the radiator or in the transmission. So we went ahead and reflared, we cut off one of the ends of this line, reflared it and put these ends, these female ends on. Now all I have to do is make this line look like this line. Let's get wrenching or bending. So the key is to get your line bent close enough to the original one so that you can manipulate it enough to get it in position to be able to put on your fitting. So I'm looking good here on the front with our new cold case radiator. And then if you go back here to my transmission, I'm looking really good at being able to line that up with my fitting here. I should be able to just with a little bit of bending on this tube, 
get it lined up and get it sealed onto those fittings with no problems. The key is to get the one end on. If you can get one of the fittings on, preferably the transmission, because that's a really solid point for this to get seated onto, for this line to get seated onto, then you can kind of bend from there and get it up to the radiator. The radiator, you don't want to really be bending from the radiator because that's kind of like, uh, it's a pretty sensitive area and you can screw things up there. You just don't want to be messing with a nice new aluminum radiator. So hook it up to your transmission and then work your line back into place up to your radiator and then install it on your radiator. We are ready to do burnouts. Low party, here we come. And Alex kind of saved the day and went and talked to one of our neighbors at our shop. And he actually had a full set of Continental tires, used Continental tires. They're 17 inches. They will fit the HK wheels. They're not the exact size we need, but at least we're repping the right brand and we can support the new rims, which really was what I wanted to do. I was pretty sad we weren't going to be able to sport those because they're just going to they're just going to make that car, especially having that shiny new wheel and the appropriate style of wheel. So, oh, I'm just so excited. I just went and picked up some valve stems. We're going to get those mounted and put on the car and we might even be able to leave tonight for Mo party. This is really exciting. I think that's the first set of new like wheels we've ever bought on HH wheels. Doing that shit Blame you, I guess, huh? You used to be like, what can we get? That's the crustiest shit around here. And now it's like, hey. We still like crusty shit. We still like our crusty shit a lot. <laughs> yeah, but now it's like, hey, let's make this crusty shit not so crusty. Can we have like only 10% crusty instead of 120% crusty? Thanks. Car. I don't know what you're talking about. We buy whole cars. You know, you buy what's left of a car. That's like wholesale value. <laughs> technically, it's still a whole car. It's early the next morning. We're getting ready to leave with the charger. The wheels look so good. You did a really good job putting them on, Alex. I didn't do anything. I just showed up. Wow, you put them on last night because I had the most incredible migraine ever. But anyways, it looks so good. Everything is going to plan as of right now. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> um, James should be here any minute with the RV and then we will do the swap and get on the road. Hey, I've got some really good jokes for you. Do you want to hear them? Sure. What did the grape say when it got squished? Just stop whining, Carolyn. Nothing. He just let out a little wine. How does dry skin affect you at work? Hmm, I don't know. You don't have any elbow grease to put into it. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies? Supplies! <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm going back to editing now. The tortures were put through. Huh? On our road trips. The right. tortures. It's time for a beer now. I think it's safe to say we're in the right place. Oh yeah. Total Mopar Nation this weekend. You ready for the Mopar abomination, Jeff? Yes. Caroline. Yes. Where's my eggs? Let the domestication team. I'm not doing that bullshit. <laughs> you, want, you want food? Don't say that shit. Team's you. Excited? Oh yeah. Mopar baby. We are here at the Mo Party. I'm so ready for Mo Party. This is gonna be so fun. I really like Bowling Green. It's a really good place to hang out and the weather right now. Perfect. Yeah. I think this whole track is a Holly booth. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, this is Holly's track, dude. See, under the glass.
glass. We're not going to be parked next to under the glass, are we? Frizz never would have thought that he was going to be right here at Mo Party last year, this time. There's no way, right? It's impossible. It's like this, this car has been sitting for 22 years. It went on power tour this year, and now we're sitting in front of the Holly booth, in front of the burnout pit. I, I couldn't be more excited for this car. suck to own a six-pack 440 Roadrunner in green. Oh my god. This is Mopar heaven. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, miserable. <laughs> You're absolutely miserable, right? Uh, it's really special to be here and see this many Mopar cars all in one spot you can see every color that was ever made look over here it's a badass challenger look over here there's a badass charger look over here there's a badass d150 everywhere you look you you just see kick-ass cars from the era that i love which is 68 through 72. FSM garage that is rust is lighter than carbon fiber. The freaking slow folks! Well, the smallest person in our group just tried to get in this thing and it just didn't work. I so. tried. <laughs> I did my best. Valiant Effort Award. Yep. Swap meet got me again. Moparty is such a great event. Literally hundreds of Mopars from all over the country gather together to connect and participate in events like drag racing, autocross, and even a dyno. It's truly one of the wildest Mopar parties held each year. Okay, it's always dangerous for me to walk around the swap meet because whenever I see something really, really cool, I just end up buying it. This is the, probably one of the coolest things that I saw at the swap meet today. All right. Yeah. Is this legendary or what? Yes, it is most legendary. Legend, wait for it, dairy. Definitely the heavy class because this thing is heavy. Oh. Come on, James. Not that heavy. Sweet. This Still is gonna awesome. go. It's gonna look great in the shop. You look well. freaking badass in that car. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, oh, actually, so a guy with a white Superbird parked next to us, he walks up as I got in the car, he's like, trade? I'm like, Oh yeah. And he's like, ha, and walked away. <laughs> I'd have to 
say our best purchase ever <laughs> was, the, was this, but the best swap meet purchase ever is this. Yes, that is so cool. Naturally, when stepping foot into a 69 Dodge Charger, most would immediately think Dukes of Hazard. One of our friends got us an inn at the dirt track, so James and I didn't hesitate one second to have our Bo and Luke Duke moment, so we swapped the tires and headed over. We're really gonna do this. We're really doing this. We're gonna fulfill our biggest Dukes of Hazard dreams and take the Charger on the Hoopty X course, which is an off-road course. Hopefully we're not gonna break it. Well, we're not gonna break it. We're gonna take it easy, kinda. This, this course was built for Jeeps, so I really don't know what we're getting ourselves into. Get sideways. We're going on a Jeep course. I know. This is crazy. I can't wait to have this Dukes and Azure moment we've been wanting for like ever. This is my childhood dream come true. This is totally Chris Bird song inspired. Oh yeah, I credit Chris Bird's song to all of this right now. Love that guy. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Ugh. Not that big anymore. Oh jeez. Oh, <laughs> that was full air, boy. Do you hear it? Did you I feel it? it? Yeah, I heard feel it. 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 You ready to do this? Childhood dream.
That's so good. That's the best. All the quarter panel just has so much dirt. <laughs> we lost this camera. Did we? Oh yeah, look at the dirt. <laughs> look at the quarter panel. Well, at least it looks complete now. Yes. That was awesome. That's our trophy right there, girl. Yeah, it is. Seriously, how epic was that? Needless to say, we enjoyed every second of that. Now it's time to get ready for the burnout competition. You nervous? Just a little bit. Why? I just want to make sure the car performs. That's my only fear is I'm like worried that like something's going to go wrong. But you know what? If it breaks, it breaks. We did a lot of fun stuff. We got a trailer to tow it home, so. We definitely caked on some serious mud. Totally worth it though. So apparently there's some crazy rule someone came up with where we're not allowed to have dirt on our car during the burnout contest. Strange, right? All right, should be ready for the burnouts now. We just switched off our rally tires after James and Caroline went on the off-road course and tried to jump this thing more than once. James took it off, actually off the course. Um, so now we have the 14s in the back with some new tires for Caroline to burn. And we have our HK wheels in the front that are 17s. So should be all good to go. Let's go do some burnouts. The flags are awesome. The flags are awesome. Caroline is about to do her first burnout ever. Like really, she has never done a burnout. Like nothing to really talk about. And she's in the burnout competition. What is going on here? In front of thousands of people, she's doing a burnout competition at the Mo Party, which I, I, I couldn't be prouder. She's fantastic. She, she is, she's got it set up. You're gonna set these brakes up. She's just gonna pour on the freaking, pour on the throttle and let those 14 inch tires burn to the ground. So we do have some stiff competition. We're going up against the General Lee here. And Sleeper Dude in his Grimmy, which is radical as hell. This thing is awesome. I didn't do it. You ready to rip it? I'm ready. I hope it holds together. Come on. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. That thing sounds mean. Oh, you're running on the back of that thing. Those are just trailer casings right there. That's all they are, okay? And you need to watch your language for what you need to do. <laughs> Secret weapon. Lock out those rear brakes. Make it happen, it's a show. Like everybody's looking at me like, you gonna blow the rocker panels up then? I'm like, maybe. All right, arched under the hood. Giving Frizz new life right here. Right? I think it's gonna be a good time. We're gonna get excited. I think this is like the last crowning school of the low party. We can pull this off and make this awesome. Frozen oh, really is not dead. Like through the ventilation system into the rental car, I mean into this, it's really hard to return it. Video and photos of this. 
and I'm reaching for the power. What do you think, man? I think Caroline's going to rock this. Because <laughs> she, oh, yeah, for sure. So at five God, I'm hang the rock all out. of the scent <laughs> things, I'm buying every <laughs> black ice. It's going to be legendary. Legend. Wait for it. Dairy. Dairy. Shut up for a second. This is Caroline. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Caroline is way cuter than the dude that was driving the general. She is in a B body. And it's her birthday today. Happy birthday. How old are you today? 24 years old today. No bar, no car, and the American flag, ladies and gentlemen. Caroline, get out there and tear it up. Go see Adam. We'll get you set. Dude, and the helmet is rad. Oh, in this moment, I am feeling the self-inflicted pressure. I want to make this epic and really put on a good show for everybody in the crowd who's cheering me on. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Caroline is already cooler than everybody else here. Because I just found out from Mr. Hoopty Cross himself that she ran that car on the dirt off-road track today. Yes, dude. Yes, yes, yes. Caroline, do me proud there, sister. I am ready for this. Uh-oh. Hold the brake, hold the brake, hold the brake. Oh no! Locking up the front brakes. Hold on, now we're in the water. That might help. Oh, there we go. Oh no! Come on, Caroline! 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 Caroline, Caroline, come on, I want to see some smoke. Oh, come on. The sure grip is not happy. feels like a big failure, but it's really not. Oh, okay. I just sit here and enjoy my cupcake in peace, please. You know how proud I am of you, I right? don't even want to watch the video. Do you know how proud I am of you, right? Like, can I just, can I just be like, oh man, it was catastrophic battery failure on all the devices and we lost the footage. Can, can I be like proud, proud father here? Proud of what? <laughs> proud of you, you... You really put it out there and you know the car failed and that this kind of stuff happens i'm just chalking it up to the fact that it's about time we fail <laughs> a frizz gave up on us you know i mean you know the car is just we pushed it to its limits today and that's why we brought it to mopar party and i th i think we've or we've done what we set out to prove to do push the car to its limits and now we need to upgrade it Coming back for vengeance next year. <laughs> well, we we're, we're, we have a goal now, and we're gonna just upgrade all the systems. We're gonna make it a badass car, even more badass than it actually is now. We have an excuse to to do all these upgrades, and it's gonna be super fun and keep its legacy running. You're gonna be back back to next year, even better. Although that may have been slightly painful to watch, taking into consideration of everything that Frizz has endured, it's pretty impressive that it's made it this far. After it was all said and done, James gave the car a good once over and discovered some pretty major issues that we probably caused from all of the shenanigans here at Moparty. So we have a loose hub. We have an upper ball joint that's completely roached out. And when we were on the dirt course yesterday, we made the suspension go up and down so much that we split the bump stop. So all the rubbers are just completely dry rotted. But I think this weekend is still 
a major success. We got the show Frizz off. Everybody loves them. And we still, we're still driving them like, like you're supposed to, you know? This hub is even, this is even more loose. Yeah, needless to say, we're gonna have to rebuild this whole front end. We'll finish up the show and then we'll load her up, take her home, and get this whole front end rebuilt and uh, make it more drivable, make it more safe. Like I woke up this morning just feeling like, uh, like totally deflated, which kind of sucks, but I just, I gotta chalk it up to the fact that like the car didn't want to be pushed anymore. And we really weren't prepared. So I can't really, I can't be mad because we didn't, we didn't actually practice any of this. We didn't, we didn't, we just kind of went with it like we normally do and we usually succeed. So I can't really feel guilty about the fact that it's like almost time for a fail. <laughs> it still sucks. I'm not gonna say it doesn't. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to making it better. I'm not kidding you, I tried everything. Everybody gave me every bit of advice. I'm like, all right, I'll try this, I'll try this, I'll try this. And I was just thinking, I'm like, trying to put it through its paces, try different things. Nothing worked. And I just got like two little chirps out of it. And I swear to God, those tires did not. The Still tires were spinning. Anything. I have it on video. The tires I were know. spinning, but no smoke was coming I out. heard it, but I didn't see anything. And I was like, <clears throat> like what i'm not kidding you last night i was thinking about every single modification we can do to this car to make it blow the tires off one more year and your insurance goes down on your car Thank God. Oh one more year and you can rent a car probably never do that but great i truly cannot imagine a more fulfilling way to spend my own birthday Frizz has brought us all some of the best memories we've ever had, and for that, we're just so grateful. Thank you for loving Frizz as much as we do, and now that we came to Mo Party and broke Frizz, now it's time to head home, regroup, and get wrenching. This is not the last for Frizz, I promise. We're just gonna have to come back better and more prepared. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Now get out there and get wrenching on your project. Good life.